Now, in order to understand black body radiation, we first need to know, what exactly is a black body? Well, by definition, a black body is an idealized or perfect object that can not only absorb all the incoming radiation that is incident upon it, but it can completely re-emit all of it too. We have unknowingly seen many examples of black bodies before, without knowing that they were black bodies because they weren't labeled as such in previous contexts. Things like light bulbs or molten lava flowing as a result of volcanic eruptions, or even iron ores used in blacksmithing are all excellent examples of black bodies. In fact, you are a black body too. You absorb radiation from sunlight, and you can emit radiation too, albeit not efficiently. And in fact, this concept has been put to use during the global coronavirus pandemic, where thermal images of guests can determine the presence of a fever. But the closest thing we have to a perfect black body, one that ideally absorbs everything and emits everything, is the core of a star. To absorb means to take in, to suck up or drink in anything in the case of a liquid, for example, or to soak up like a sponge in water. And to emit means to send forth, in the case of light or liquid, heat, sound, or particles, or to discharge something, or to give forth or release. But now let's think about this for a second. We determined that you are a black body. But since you are a black body, what wavelengths do you absorb? What wavelengths do you emit? And how much of these wavelengths? Assuming we actually know the wavelength, then how do we quantify how much? And how do we put this in a diagram or a graph? By measuring how intense the light can be. The intensity of light of a particular wavelength, in terms of astronomy, is a measure of the amount of energy given off by a single unit of surface area of the object that's emitting the light per unit time. Now, when we say unit of surface area, we mean a small patch on the surface of the black body that measures one meter by one meter in terms of its width and height. We look at how much light is emitted from each of these tiny squares every second to determine the intensity of the light coming from that black body. Now, since energy is measured in units of joules and area in meters squared and time in seconds, intensity has units of joules per second per meter squared. But a joule per second is also referred to as a watt of power. So we can say that intensity, also has measurements made in units of watts per meter squared. Say you have a specific kind of camera that measures light of only one wavelength, much like the IR cameras that were used in taking thermal images of a crowd of people, and you decide to measure the intensity of light at a specific wavelength. To measure this on a graph, well, we need a graph. This graph measures the intensity or the relative brightness of the light on the vertical axis and the wavelength of light on the horizontal axis. We measure low intensity towards the bottom of the graph and high intensity towards the top. Wavelength increases from short to long as we move further towards the right on the graph. Now imagine there's an athlete at a track meet ready to participate in a 500 meter dash at a tournament. Let's say the thermal intensity or the heat coming off the body of this athlete before the 500 meter dash is measured in the infrared at only one wavelength, 9,600 nanometers. Now, before the dash, there's a low amount of thermal energy detected from the athlete. But if we measured the athlete's thermal energy immediately after the 500 meter dash ends, this is what we would see, an incredible increase in the amount of light emitted in this wavelength. Now, if this was a relay race and several teammates ran together, we could possibly see more than just one wavelength emitted among the various athletes. Those who ran the relay are emitting at much higher intensities than those who did not. Now, in a more astronomically realistic case, there are significantly many more lines between the ones that we already see. So it would be easier to just connect the tops of these lines and draw a curve, a curve that represents the various levels of intensity of light emitted at different wavelengths. Now, this type of graph, one of intensity versus wavelength, is called a spectrum. Humans emit primarily in the infrared, but stars, on the other hand, emit primarily visible radiation, so their spectra will peak more near the visible range of light. Here are three different black body curves, aka black body spectra, emitting preferentially in the visible portion of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum, so they may as well be the black body spectra of stars. The peak of each spectrum occurs at a different wavelength, so we refer to that wavelength as the lambda max of the star.
This is the wavelength associated with the most intense color of light emitted. It is the wavelength associated with the peak of the graph. Let's see an example. What is the peak wavelength, which is another way to refer to the lambda max, of each of these black body spectra? Let's look at the blue curve first. Find the peak and then draw an imaginary line straight down to the horizontal axis of the graph. Where this line intersects with the horizontal axis will tell you the peak wavelength of the blue black body curve. This reads approximately 560 nanometers. The green has a peak wavelength of around 680 nanometers, and the red is almost 910 nanometers. Now, these don't necessarily imply blue, green, or red stars, but they are a good way of differentiating the various black body curves from one another. Here we see the spectra of several stars, but the shape is slightly different from the previous black body curves we've seen. In this case, the main difference is that the x-axis is in units of frequency, not wavelength. But thinking back to what we covered in unit 3, wavelength and frequency are related through lambda equals c over f. So we could see the corresponding wavelengths to each frequency added below. The vertical axis still represents the intensity of light, just as before, which means that all of the peaks of the curves here are also the lambda max of each spectrum.